Welcome back. Um, we are on Al Adamson Disc 6. This will be done in clips. Uh, I was able to get through one today. I wanted to share my thoughts with you. And then, uh, this will basically be two clips edited together. Uh, both reviews are they're being done at separate times. So, what movie shall we talk about? Well, does this give you a hint? If it does not... This is from Dracula vs. Frankenstein. So far, this has been my favorite Al Adamson movie. Starts off with credit sequence with an opening credit sequence that reminds me a lot of spaghetti westerns, oddly enough. Um, there's even some animation in it, and I just thought that was really neat. Uh, when did this come out? Dracula, Dracula vs. Frankenstein came out. In 1971. So the effects, while the opening credits was kind of neat, and like I said with animation, I like that. The one thing I didn't like is there's this high pitch something or other. Not 100% sure what that high pitch something or other is, to be honest with you. But there is a really kind of high pitch noise that really got to me. So, um, that was the downside of the credits. The, what, what did I like about it? Well, it starts off fast. Dracula bites somebody, and someone gets their head chopped off in the opening sequence. And then it kind of settles down into, it, well, it meanders. It, it takes a weird detour, and this woman is actually part of the plot, so it's not anything too bad. A woman named Jamie LaFontaine, I believe it's Jamie LaFontaine, is doing a burlesque number and sings a song called I Travel Light with two guys next to her. She is a main character, but just the introduction is a full song, which I thought was kind of strange. But we go through that. Um, then it goes to people at a carnival who go through this, this uh, creature exhibit where Forrest J. Ackerman plays a doctor. It's not John, it's not Carradine this time, it's Forrest J. Ackerman. So, Ackerman plays Dr. Dur Dure, I think it's pronounced. And it is a very interesting character. He reminds me a lot of Jonathan Adams from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Not the only time you'll hear me reference that movie or mention that. And he's in a wheelchair, he has the, the blanket over his lap, and he's going like that. Um, one of the downsides to this movie, and I, and I won't reveal the, the twist that's in here. I know it's, uh, it was made in 71, but I, I, I recommend everybody run out and see this movie. Um, the only issue I really had is with Dracula. They modulate his voice, and it can sometimes be hard to understand or hear him. Also, at one point, I'm pretty sure the person that plays Frankenstein's monster, I'm pretty sure he almost falls because he can't see through the mask. But Dracula looks a lot like Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. He has the, the afro. If you take away the goatee, he has the same gray, almost grayish white makeup, and he has the same type of cape. Now, these fangs are replicas, clearly, of Dracula's. And that is another downside, is that very clearly they were bought at a Halloween store, just the plastic ones that make it kind of hard to talk. So I'm guessing that's why they dubbed them in later with the reverb. I'm not 100% sure. But overall, I liked this. This was my favorite Adamson movie so far. Um, well, second... Well, yeah, I'd say favorite horror film he's done. Because I really liked uh, Six Bloody Graves. Or Seven Bloody Graves. Whatever the Bloody Graves movie was. So, yeah, I really, really like this. I do recommend... Um, I think they're sold out of the Adamson set. Oh, well, I'm thinking of it because his picture's on here. Al Adamson is at a bar scene that Jamie LaFontaine is singing at, I'm pretty sure. There's also a scene where Jamie LaFontaine gets poisoned with, I think, LSD? at a protest because they're hippies and they protest. Um, 
But no, Al Adamson shows up himself in the back of the bar at this uh, burlesque concert, whatever you want to call it, that this woman's doing. And it's very weird in that it shows there's a camera angle that shows this woman dancing. And as she's dancing, it cuts to a camera angle where there's nobody in the crowd. And then she starts singing and dancing some more. And then there's a crowd only in the back. So just very odd. But again, favorite Al Adamson movie? I recommend everybody go check it out. I don't know if Severin has this anymore. Uh, I, last I knew they were sold out. It might get a single release. It might not. I don't know. So, so that's it for Dracula vs. Frankenstein. Next up, we have Brain of Blood. I want to make a correction, so I'm going to tag this at the end of the, the first clip. So the correction, J. Carol Nash played Dr. DeRay, and uh, his assistant, Gr Groton, which I did not mention, is played by Lon Chaney Jr., I meant to mention uh, Groton, but or Gruton, but I completely forgot. Uh, not going to reveal what he does or who he is. It's like I said, run out and see this movie. But wanted to add those corrections at the very end here. Uh, Forrest J. Ackerman, he actually played Doctor Baymont. So my apologies on that. I was wrong. Um, I should have looked it up before I recorded this and. Meant to do it, completely forgot. That was an experience. I just finished trying to watch Brain of Blood. Um, brain stuff gets to me. Like, I hate seeing it in movies, TV, and stuff like that. Uh, I couldn't watch it, and then it dawned on me I've seen this before. So, Brain of Blood is on the same disc as Dracula vs. Frankenstein, which I couldn't figure out why. Well, they star the same cast, and I know Al Adamson movies, most of them star the same cast. Well, the guy that plays Mohammed played Dracula in Dracula vs. Frankenstein, and uh, one of the other people shows up in this one as well, I can't think of the name. But, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's one of those where I saw the brain surgery and that affected me. I know, what was I expecting Brain of Blood? And yes, I have seen this before. I saw it as the oozing skull as part of cinematic Titanic. Um, this type of film, not for me. I don't really like surgery films all that often anyway. And the first 15 minutes was surgery intercut with a guy going from house to house. I just, I couldn't do it. The movie's not for me. Let's go that way. The movie is, this movie is not for me. So, apologies on that. I was not able to get through it. Not my type of film. Uh, so, what am I going to do instead? Well, I discussed disc... What was it? Four? I discussed disc four. So, I will place that after this. So, this way you can hear my thoughts on disc four. Uh, at the end of disc five, I know that's weird. Or at the end of disc six. I know that's kind of weird. If you look on my channel, you notice I go disc one, two, three, five. Apparently, either two things happened. I deleted footage of disc, five, uh, disc 4, or, and this one is probably what happened, I forgot to hit the record button. So, I'm here to talk about three movies total. First, let's talk about the Al Adamson stuff, Blood of Dracula's Castle, and Horror of the Blood Monsters. Blood on Dracula's Castle is... Kind of boring. There is some uh, bad footage in it. The really bad one is when this guy goes to leave. The footage is so grainy, or it shows a guy in a courtyard, and the footage is so grainy, he appears in the next scene, so you figure out who it is. But the footage was so grainy, you can't really tell who it was. Um, I do like that Dracula is a husband and wife in this. And that's about all I had to say about it, so... That's, that's one that I was really excited for, but it kind of disappointed. The next one, Horror of the Blood Monsters. Okay. Horror of the Blood Monsters. Herodine shows up in this one. 
This one is just really weird, and I found it really hard to watch because they're on different planets, and uh, in the different planets, or different sections of the planet, it's like cavemen are in red, uh, aliens are in green, the water planet is in blue, and it's all with, like, filters. That made it really hard to watch, and it is very minimalist, which I did enjoy that. But it was just hard to watch with all those different colors. So, do I recommend either Blood of Dracula's Castle or Horror of the Blood Monsters? Uh, Blood of Dracula's Castle, I do recommend somewhat if you are, if you're curious. It can get boring at times, but there is a good fight scene toward the end. Horror of the Blood Monsters, I don't recommend because it hurt my eyes and I would be worried that it would hurt you. Hurt yours as well. Now, there is another version of uh, Blood of Dracula's Castle, because there is a TV cut, and it does say it on the book in here, right under theatrical cut and how long it is, but it does not tell you anywhere else on the box that the theatrical cut is, or that the TV cut is involved. So, that was Al Adamson Disc 4. What's coming up next? Next up, we have Disc 7, which is Satan Sadist. And Angel's Wild Women. And then after those two, I will have a, a, a an announcement to make regarding what's going on. Because the Al Adamson set will be put on pause in a month. But that will be explained after we get back to Al Adamson. Next week, there is an unboxing. Follow, then the week after, it will be Al Adamson again. So... So remember to stay spooky, stay scary, take carry, and I will see you guys next time.